Just imagine you think you have built the perfect query and then one week later you run a refresh and it breaks because one column name in the data source changed. How can we deal with this? In this video, you're gonna find out. My name is Buzz from How to Power BI. If you're new to this channel and you're looking for ways to improve your Power BI skills, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. Now let's get started. I connected to an Excel file that has three columns, country, department, and revenues. But for the revenues, we don't just have the revenues in the header, we have total revenues week 43. So there's also a week indicator. And let's say next week, we're gonna have the same three columns, rather, the header will change for the revenues because then we have week 44. So I'm gonna jump back to Power BI and click on Refresh Preview. And after running the refresh, it returns an error. And the reason is that some of the steps that I have in my query are referring to total revenues week 43, which is not there anymore because it's now week 44. So in this case, specifically, is the change type step. So what to do now? Well, let's have a look at option number one. Now I can go here to applied steps. Now let's first remove the change type step and also the promoted header step. Now at this point, we have in the first row, the headers, but we are not gonna use that one. What we're gonna do instead is manually write the header name for each column. Okay, so here we're gonna have exactly the same, country, country. Then we have department for the department column. And now for column three, where we usually would have total revenues week 44, we're just gonna write revenues. And now we can simply get rid of the first row by going to the home tab and then remove rows, remove top rows. And I want to remove the first one. So now that we have removed the top row, we can select all of the columns, go to transform and then detect the data types. And let's see if the solution still works when we update the column header. So I'm gonna go back to my Excel file, gonna change week 44 back to 43, gonna save it. And then I'm gonna run the refresh in Power BI. And you see, no problem. Now that worked, however, we have to name every single column. And if you have a lot of columns, this can be quite a hassle. So instead of that, I'm gonna show you another solution where you don't have to rename every single column. So the second method will enable us to basically say, okay, rename column three. So we make a reference to the column number instead of the column name. So here we are at the beginning again. I connected to the Excel file. You see we have total revenues week 43. And the problem is with the change type step huh? because week 43 will turn into week 44. So I'm gonna get rid of that one first, okay? Now, different from the first option is that I'm going to leave in the promoted header step. So what we're going to do next is to get an overview of all of the column headers and save it as a list. Okay, so to do this, you simply go over here to the formula bar. Now, if you don't have the formula bar, you first have to go to view and then turn on the formula bar. Now, once you have that, we're going to insert a new step. Now, here we're going to use a function that's called uh, table column names. Now make sure you use the IntelliSense feature. And so by pressing control space, it also shows you the description. So it returns the column names as a list. Okay, so one column that has items. So to select it, press tab. Then we want to refer to the promoted headers uh, step and the table that got returned at that point. Close the brackets. And now you see we have a list that contains all of the column headers, country, department, total revenues, week 43. If I want to refer to a specific item in that list, now in this case, that is gonna be total revenues week 43, then you can go back to your formula bar and then make use of these curly brackets and then type in the row of the item number, okay? So here you probably think, ah, that's then row three, so I'm gonna type in a three. However, you see that returns an error because M, huh? so the language of that Power Query uses, starts from zero. Okay, so I'm gonna have, uh, I have to type in here a two to get the item that's on the third row. Okay, so now we know how to get the header of a certain column. How can we use this? Well, first of all, after doing this, I have to insert another step. And here I want to have the table that got returned for the promoted header step. So just 
we type in promoted headers, use the IntelliSense, press enter, and you see here we have exactly the same as for the promoted headers tab. And now we want to rename total revenues. Okay, so here let's double click on that header and rename it to revenues. Now that gives you the M code for changing the column headers. Okay, now you see that it refers to total revenues week 43. And that is the part that we now need to replace with the code that we wrote before. So let's jump back to that step, which is still called custom one. And here you see how we can get the header that we want to edit. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that without the equal sign. Then I'm going to go back to my last tab and I'm going to replace total revenues week 43 with that code and also include the quotation marks. Just copy paste and you see it still works. Okay, so now that we renamed the column header for column three, which is then revenues, we can change the data type over here. So transform the tag data type. And now I can jump back to my Excel file and update the week number in the revenues header and run the refresh in Power BI. Okay, so here I'm gonna update it to week 44, save the Excel file, I'm gonna jump back to Power BI and over here under the Home tab, I'm gonna click the refresh button and see it still works. Now to clean up the query a little bit, I can remove custom one, custom two. And so custom one was just to show you how we could get a list and then return a certain item in that list. So I'm gonna remove that. And custom two, we also don't need anymore. Now what if in a data set, we also have another column that has the week number in it? How can we then update the query so that still works? Now here back in Power BI, you see that we have the total spent week 44 column. And what I want to do is rename it. So I'm going to go to the rename column step and override that one with spend. And if you rename multiple columns, let's say you would also rename department to tab and then insert. Then you see that it doesn't add an additional step, but instead of that, you have here the function table dot rename columns that refers back to the previous step. And here you see that you have a list of lists. So a list is always uh, shown in between curly brackets. So here you have the original column name and then the column name that you want to have. And then for the second column, exactly the same thing. Okay, so how can we use that now? Well, what we need is we want to copy this one over, this list where it says total spent week 44 and replace that with spent. We're going to copy that. I'm going to go back to my original renamed column step. And then just after the closing brackets uh, of the first one, so make sure that you are in between uh, the two curly brackets, I'm going to add over here this list that I just copied from the other step. And you see now I am also renaming the spent column. However, we are specifically referring here to week 44. So instead of that, I want to replace that with what we created before. So now I'm going to do exactly the same as what we did before. So we have the function table.column names returns all of the column headers. And then we want to have now before we wanted to have the third row, but here for spent, we want to have the fourth row. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that code over and replace this total spent week 44 with the same code. Just update over here the item number that we want to retrieve with a three. Now the second rename column step, I don't need anymore. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. Over here, I also have to redo the change type step. So I'm gonna take all of my columns, transform, and then detect the data types. And that's it. So also if you have multiple columns, you can use the same technique. You just have to repeat the same process. So you see that the second solution is a little bit more complicated. However, the upside is that you don't have to rename every single column, okay? However, there's still one problem that we need to address. And that is what if the revenues column might change from column three to column four or five? Well, then your query will break again. So we need to add a few more steps to our query to make it even more dynamic. Now let's go back to Power BI and see when you refresh the query that you will get errors for the revenues column because it's not column three anymore. 
it's changed to column four and the span column changed into column five. Now, what to do? Well, first of all, I'm gonna remove the change type step. And I'm also then gonna go one step before renaming the columns, okay? And here I want to insert a new step in between. And let's start off again with returning the column headers. So over here, table.column names, and then I'm referring to the promoted headers step. That gives me all of the headers. So the next step that I'm gonna create will find in this list the row number on which we have the item that contains revenues. Okay, so I'm gonna insert a new step again. Now, just like before, this returns us all of the headers that we have. So I'm gonna rename this step to headers. And now I want to figure out, okay, on which row do we have the item that contains revenues? So let's insert a new step. And here we're gonna use a function that's called list.transform. Returns a new list of values computed from this list. Now let's see how we can use that. So let's select it by pressing tab, okay? Now the list that we want to transform is the headers list, okay? So here we just simply refer back to headers. And now we need to have our transformation, okay? So here we want to basically go down on list and then every time check if it contains revenues. Now we can do this with the statement each and then we can use the function text contains. Now it turns whether the text contains a certain substring. Now open the bracket. Now here we want to check every time the value that's in that list. And to refer to that value, you simply use an underscore, then comma. And here we can type in revenues for the substring that we are looking for. Then we need two closing brackets, one for the text contains function and one for the list transform function. And you see, it gives me now a list with the same number of rows, but only with false and true. Now you see for every column header that does not contain revenues, we have false, but then we have over here the column header for the revenues where it returns true. Now the next thing that we can do then is figure out, okay, what is the position of true in that list. So now we can go back to a formula and use another function that figures out on which row we have the true value. Okay, now the function that we're gonna use is called list and then position of. Now open bracket. Now what does it need? First of all, it needs a list. Well, that's, that's what we have here. And then we can go all the way to the end, comma and then the value that we are looking for, which is true. Now make sure that you do not type it like this in between quotation marks, but just type in true, and then close the list position of function. I see it returns three, which means it's in the fourth row. Okay, so this function, so this formula basically figures out what the column number is for the header that we want to change. Okay, now we did it in two steps which we can of course also combine. So I'm gonna go back to the header step and just copy over this formula. Then jump back and then replace headers that, and my reference to that list with the actual formula that we have for that step. So now we have a formula that figures out the position of the header that we wanna change, so which column it is. And let's also reflect that in the name of the applied steps. So here, custom one, I'm gonna rename it to uh, header position. So now that we have this, let's insert a new step that returns again the promoted headers table. So I'm gonna refer here to promoted headers. And now we want to change the name for total revenues week 44 to revenues. Now that gives me then the M code that I want to change. Now here, the part that I want to change is total revenues week 44. So we need over here the list of the headers and then between curly brackets, the column number for which we want to change the name. So that is three. And then instead of hard coding this three, 
we can refer to this tab that contains the header position. Okay, so let's type in here, header position. And you see, it still works. It would be even better if we take the code first for headers and copy that over to the renaming columns tab. So instead of having here headers, I just put in the formula that does the same. And then for header position, I'm also going to the header position tab, copy the formula, then go to the last tab, and then replace header position with that code. And now we don't need these two steps anymore. So I can get rid of headers as well as the header position step. And for spans, we can do exactly the same. So we can just copy over the formula again and then replace total span week 44 with the formula that we created. And the only thing that you then need to update is revenues to spend, of course. So the last solution is definitely the more difficult one. However, this one is only necessary if the column changes in position or can change in position. So I hope this helps you out in dealing with changing column headers in your data source. If you have anything that's related to changing column headers and that is not solved by this solution, then let me know in the comment section below. Now, if you like these tips and tricks, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. And I hope to see you in the next video.